Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Engineering Career Coach Podcast. Today I have with me Pam Hurley, PhD. She's the founder and president of Hurley Wright, Inc., a certified women-owned small business. In this episode, we talk about how engineers can become more effective writers. We discuss some of the challenges that engineers face when writing, share some tips and strategies for improving your writing skills, and the importance of writing in a clear, concise, and engaging style. I'm your host, Jeff Perry. I'm a leadership and career expert, and I'm the author of the upcoming book, The Intentional Engineer. You can find more information on me at jeff-perry.com. And this is the Engineering Career Coach Podcast brought to you by EMI, the first podcast dedicated to helping engineers and technical professionals with both their personal and professional development. Now it's time to jump to the main segment of our episode. Today, I have the pleasure to have with me Pam Hurley, PhD. She's the founder of Hurley Wright Incorporated. Pam, so grateful to have you on the show. Well, thank you for inviting me. So I, I'm so excited about this. Now, Pam, you come from a different background than probably most of our guests and certainly most of our listeners. I'm curious if you can share just a brief overview of where you come from. What does the day-to-day -day look like for you? Sure. Yeah, I, I come from a, a background in academia. So uh, one of the things that that uh, taught me in academia was what a poor job we do in universities of training people to write in the real world. And so after I finished my doctorate, I decided to start a business because I understood that what I was teaching uh, in academia was practical and could be applied to, for, for most professionals in the workplace. Okay, very cool. So I'm excited to dive in and, and certainly provide some ideas for how we can help some of our listeners um, improve some of their writing skills. So when, when you work with a lot of engineers on this and helping them improve their writing and their communication, right? So what do you see as some of those challenges that engineers face when they're trying to write in written communication? Well, one of the things we ask, or at least I ask in my, uh, first thing I ask in my classes is how many of you like writing? And believe it or not, most engineers say they don't like to write. Weird, yeah. I yeah. know, very surprising. And so one of the things, I mean, it just makes sense. If it's not something you, you like to do, then you typically are going to procrastinate. When you procrastinate, your skill set diminishes, right? Tiger Woods doesn't go out and play golf once a year. He practices every day. And so, we, you know, one of the things we, we, we try to help them understand is that engineers are fantastic problem solvers. I mean, that's what they do. That's what they thrive on. That's that's what they're wonderful at. And so what we try to teach them is how do you take those great problem solving skills and apply them to writing? And it's really not as difficult as it might appear. Okay, interesting. I mean, I'm just thinking about from my own experience, I know that it was early on in like in school that I had, like a lot of engineers, some natural um, strengths in the math and science and all that stuff. And so people were like, oh yeah, engineering would be good for you. But uh, what I really liked about those things when I was in school and gravitated toward, there was always like a right answer, right? Mm -hmm. Like I knew if I was right or wrong on that stuff. When it came to anything creative, writing or art or things like this, it was subjective, right? Um, I was getting graded on someone's opinion of what I created instead of like, you know, what exactly was the correct way. And so that immediately for me was part of my early mindset of like, writing is bad, it's hard, it's subjective. I don't like that. And so I actually act like maybe a lot of the people you work with for a long time, actively avoided times when I would do that. And so that mindset plays a plays a big role. But I certainly learned later and, and been practicing a lot more the, the last few years to, to do a lot more writing. But trying to to write in a way that's clear, concise and engaging for an audience is, is something that's, that's that's different. It's certainly not taught in engineering school. If we take any writing class, it's a technical writing class where we're just trying to communicate um, like a technical idea. But even that is hard and it's just one class and that's all that's required. So um, how do you help engineers really improve 
their style of writing to help engage their audience in effective ways. Well, that's that's exactly right, and you and you 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 nailed it to their audience. And one of the things that academia does a poor job of is teaching writing as though it is subjective. And so what happens is, uh, for a lot of people, they carry that into the workplace. Reviewers do as well. We have a whole class devoted to what reviewers are doing. And so it's, you know, review, oh, I don't like that word. Or, you know, they review for pet peeves and things like that. Writing is not subjective. There are, there are ways, and this, these are some of the things that we teach, for instance, how do you structure a sentence to emphasize the right thing for your particular readers to drive them to a conclusion? And writing is simply problem solving. What is the communication problem you're trying to solve? How do I communicate a particular message to a certain audience for a desired outcome? And so a lot of engineers and other writers don't think much about the outcome, where they're trying to get. So we, they, they tend to be writing or they tend to write from a, it's a top down. I start, at the, I start at the beginning and I end at the end. Instead of thinking about reverse engineering the document, where do I want to wind up? and then working backwards. And for a lot of people, if they do that, that works very, very well. But there are a lot of pieces in that in the, in the writing puzzle and they're not difficult to solve. It's just that academia doesn't do a very, very good job of teaching it. And, it, and we do tend to view it as very subjective because you know, people make comments like, I have no idea what that means. Why, why didn't they like that? You know, blah, blah, blah. And you know, one of the things we hear a lot of, a lot of is, well, I wrote it and then the reviewer wanted it this way. So I, I changed it and then I sent it back to the reviewer and they changed it back to the way I had it originally. So there's a tremendous amount of confusion. And so we do think about it as being subjective when it, it, it really is not. There's studies that have been done about readability and that's what we teach in our classes. It's all about readability. It's a science. Okay, so you're actually helping them almost speaking their language, creating a, the science and the structure of writing and, and the system, perhaps, as engineers really like to work in systems and processes to, to, to really Absolutely. optimize what they're doing. Now, in the end, what writing is one form of communication where th there's a lot of different instances where engineers need to communicate ideas, uh, whether that's internally, externally, whatever that is, in technical and non-technical situation. So what are those ways that you find that engineers can then use writing as a tool to do the great work that they need to do instead of seeing as oh, this is something that that's off to the side? Like how do they see their writing as a as an enabler of doing their great engineering work? Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the things that a lot of engineers, other professionals seem to not understand is that the document is the deliverable. Mm. And what I mean by that is if you're doing, you can do great work, you can go to the field, you can be doing great work in the lab, you can do whatever, whatever, whatever. But if the document doesn't convey that great work, then it's all for naught. So we want to also think about documents as conveying an image, right? Aristotle called this ethos, and I don't want to get into all the theory, but ethos yeah. called this, this, this ethos, which is the image that the writer projects. And all of us, I think, have picked up documents and read them and thought, woo, not the sharpest tool in the shed. And so that's, <laughs> that's what we're talking about. So, so a document can, can be just a way to show a reader that you are competent and intelligent and are, and are doing a good job. So documents are more than just words on a page. People really do you know, and uh, read them and make judgments about you and about the organization and about the work you do, whether you like it or not, we all do it. Okay, interesting. So like you're putting your name on that thing, you, you better make sure that's of, of high quality. And when you're do yep. doing that deliverable, you, it better be um, to, to a certain standard. You're trying to raise that standard for people. So, you know, there's the writing, there's the words that go into a document, but there's other supporting things that, that go into documents or, or resources that engineers are creating, you know, visuals, right? So charts, diagrams, pictures, how can visuals enhance the, the writing to and the communication that they're trying to get across? Yeah, so I mean, one of the things we know based on readability studies that, is that a lot of people look at visuals before they even look at text. So visuals should augment text. And what I mean by that is that they should add to not take the place of text. A lot of people want them to take the place of text. 
Um, the other thing about visuals is they have to be clear and they have to pass what we call the grunt test. And the grunt test is simply that in five seconds or less, you need to know exactly what that visual is showing you. Mm -hmm. um, we were working with a team re recently on their PowerPoints and holy moly, um, the visuals, the PowerPoints were so packed with information that it was very difficult to understand the idea that they were trying to convey. And then when you talk to them about like, oh, I'm trying to do this and that and this and that and this and that, well, you know, your, re your reader or your audience isn't going to sit down with you and go, oh, well, what did you mean by this, right? So we really have to think about, you know, visuals can be incredibly effective, but they also have to be done very well to be effective. Yeah, sometimes I've heard you're talking about those PowerPoints that just have way too much. Sometimes I've heard those called eye charts, like our eyes are just overwhelmed. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to look like. What does this actually mean? I shouldn't have to feel like I'm working too hard to understand this. It, it exactly. Be. And the same the, the same is true with written documents. If you have to read it more than once, eh, bad. Yeah. Well, and and to that point, the the onus on the engineers who are doing the writing, they probably do need to read it and write it more than once. And so <laughs> this is maybe something that I know I sometimes have resistance with and maybe other engineers do as well. Okay, you, you finally sat down, did the writing, you got the report, you know, to a complete state, but you still need to refine, edit, proofread, make sure it's ready for delivery. Sometimes I'm like, ah, like I'm done. Like, it's fine. Like the first time I went through it, but, but okay. So please explain to us why editing and proofreading is so important to, to really make our documents great. Well, yeah, I mean, pr proofreading, I mean, honestly, you can use Grammarly or some other AI for that, but the editing piece is, is really important. And one of the things we advocate in our classes is getting people to think about a checklist um, mm -hmm. when they're editing and, you know, what are the, what are the top things or, you know, five things or whatever it is that they need to edit for. So we think about editing more, we talk about more as reviewing um, and, it's semantics. But when you think about review, you're looking at the document holistically. And what I mean by that is a holistic, a holistic review of the document means you're looking at, is this written, it, writ, written for my reader? Is does, uh, does it uh, flow? Is, is, are the concepts clear? Those kinds of things, when you think about a holistic review, that's really what you need to be looking at not the minutia, which is the proofreading part. And I'm not saying that proofreading is not important, it is. But proofreading, I mean, we, I've had writers who will be like, wow, they get stuck on a particular word and they cannot move on. Put an X there and move on. You can go back to all that stuff. But one of the things when we think about writing is your brain is working on the writing problem. And when, you, when you're constantly stopping and starting, we call it wordsmithing, then you're stopping that process. Engineers are, are brilliant. So they're, they should be able to write and then what, do what we call incubation, put the document aside, come back later. But a lot of them don't because they don't like writing. So they try to do it all in one fell soup and have it done. But if you let it incubate, what's happening is, is your brain is working on it, even though you're not physically working on it. Okay. I like that. So I mean, looking at that holistic view, like we were talking about early, like who's the audience? Who are we, we writing for? Is what we've created really going to serve its intended purpose and write to and help influence or help people understand what we're trying to communicate in the first place, right? We need to be looking at that big picture instead of just like, oh, I, I outlined all the sections. I, I wrote something in all of them and like, cool, it, it's all done. Like exactly. it's really looking, does this, what we've created serve its intended purpose, which is which is critical. Because sometimes you get too deep into the details of, of the whole, or certain parts of it, you don't look at the big picture. So that's great. Um, what do you find are other things that are really important for engineers to keep in mind when they're writing these technical reports or proposals or other professional documents? Take the time to plan. They don't mm. want to plan. They just want to write because they don't like it. But if you take the time to plan, it should really be the 80-20 rule. You should be spending 80% of your time planning and only 20% of your time writing. And if a lot of people, if more people did that, they would not have the problems they do with writing. But when you're trying to rush 
you're just getting it out there and you're, or even thinking about your audience. So what a lot of folks would do, oh, I'm writing for my boss, Joe, or I'm writing for, you know, they don't do that deep dive. So one mm -hmm. of the things we do in our classes is ask people to do a deep dive into their readers. Think about their reader attributes. Think about strategies. Because if you're writing, for instance, let's just say a skeptical reader versus somebody who's on board, those are two totally different strategies. You should not be writing. I don't care if it's the same document. You should not be writing those two documents in the same way because the attitudes of the readers are very, very different. Right. Um, and I want to go back to the point we were just talking about before. Before we started recording, we were talking about like, hey, sometimes engineers have a tendency to like just provide way too much, right? So the idea of editing to me certainly is changing restructuring, but also editing to me is removal and, yes. and finding those ways to remove the things that, yeah, it, it may be important. It was part of the process, but only including the things that are most relevant to what needs to be communicated for this. So can you talk to Maybe engineers have so much knowledge and, and so much detail that they can share. How do they go through that sifting process to really edit and decide this is what actually needs to be communicated instead of every single detail that I could include? No, it's a, it's a good question. And they, they do love to include everything, whether it's relevant or, or not, because it's interesting to them. And I get that. So one of the things we talk in our classes about is the outcome statement. Mm. What are you trying to achieve? If I'm just trying to explain to you the 10 best ways to use this widget, then that, that gives me some parameters. That gives me a guide, a roadmap to understand the amount and kind of information that I should include. But when you're just writing, and again, you're, you're using that, you know, you write from the top down, then that lends itself to including far too much information, which we call overwriting. But if you have a strategy in place and you understand where you're trying to go, that is going to help you. Does this add value? Does this help me take my reader to the desired conclusion? If it doesn't, it goes. Okay, that's interesting. So, so still kind of, again, we're using that upfront planning that we've done understanding the audience, I think you said objective statement, using that as a filter as we continue throughout the process when I'm writing and certainly at the end when we're doing more editing again, you know, uses that filter to make sure does this fit the, yes. the purpose in the end. Okay, that's great. Now, if I'm an engineer and I'm like, okay, Pam, you've convinced me. I, I need to like take writing seriously and, and get better about this. Like, what are some of the resources that engineers can use to improve their writing skills. We we're talking about like, okay, just need to put in some reps and practice and do it more. But besides just writing more, what are some resources really help refine and improve their, their abilities? Well, our classes obviously are the best resource out there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but honestly, according to research, there's two, two things, very simple things that, that, that engineers should be doing. Number one is writing every single day for 15 minutes. Very mm -hmm. simple. The second thing that engineers should be doing is reading every day for 15 minutes. And I'm not talking about reading engineering documents. I'm talking about reading novels and newspaper articles and things like that, because you pick up nuances, you pick up language, you pick up sentence structure and things like that. So those are two really honestly, two main, I mean, you can read all the technical writing textbooks in the world if you want to but they're not gonna help you as much as that practice of writing and reading for 15 minutes a day, honestly. Mm -hmm. Now I'm curious, Pam, on, on the research, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but I'm curious because a lot of the books that I end up reading, I'm uh, probably the majority of them, I listen to audiobooks rather than sit down and read a book. It's sometimes a little bit easier for me to get through a book that way. Sure. Does that have any influence one way or the, uh, another or is one more beneficial or another as far as the reading to improve the writing uh, from what you know in, in the research? I don't know much. Re uh, I haven't seen much research about that. I would imagine that it's the same um, because what you're just trying, all you're trying to do is get new, um, new ways. Well, this is not said well, but all you're trying to do is to really think differently about I'm not saying this very well. I haven't done any research on that, to be quite honest with you. I would imagine it's real, it, I would imagine it's roughly the same. To me, it would be the same as whether you 
uh, when you when you sit down to write, are you writing longhand? Are you dictating? Are you using mm -hmm. a keyboard? And I think a lot right. of it would just depend on the you know the the preference of the individual. Yeah, that's, that's great. So I'm just curious if you you knew. Yeah, I don't know, but I, I it's a, yeah. it's a really good question. Yeah, that's that's great, and something I might go dig into. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, well, Pam, this has been really helpful. And so I'm excited as we go to our next segment, the, t the Take Action Today segment, well, we'll, we'll come back in just a moment and we'll get one final piece of actionable advice from Pam to help you improve your writing. We'll be right back. Now it's time for our Take Action Today segment of the show. Now, Pam, we've had a great discussion around a lot of the different aspects of how engineers can improve their writing skills and why that's important. Now, if I'm an engineer who has something I need to, to write or create today or this week, what's the, there's a lot of things I could do to work on and I don't have time to take a class or anything, but what's the one thing that I can really focus on to improve this next thing that I'm writing right away? Yeah, planning is is the most important thing that any writer can do. And it's the, it's, the, it's the thing that most writers fail to do. Know who you're writing for. Find out as much as you possibly can about them, whether it is their role in the organization, even if they're busy. So if they're busy, there are strategies that you can then employ, right? So do that. Number two, write that outcome statement. Where do you want them to go? Think of yourself as the Sherpa. You're the Sherpa taking them on the on the journey. Where do you want them to go, right? And then the third thing is, is to think about writing as a process. It is not, as we've been taught in academia, outline, first draft, second draft, we're good to go. It can be outline, first draft, back to outline. It's messy. That's okay. You need to embrace that and not think about it as a linear process, which I know can be difficult for people who love processes and systems. And then and then the final thing about that is writing is a process. Figure out what your process looks like, right? Which may take time. But once you do that, your writing is going to be so much, it's going to be such a much easier task for you. Okay, great. Some some fabulous advice there. And I and I hope people take that to heart as they're planning their next uh, thing that they have to write. So Pam, I'm sure there are going to be some people who are interested to connect with you, find you, learn more about some of the classes that you teach if they want to dive deeper into that. Where would you point people to find out more information about that? So you can contact me directly, Pam at HurleyWright.com. You can give us a call, 877-249-7483. Go to our website, HurleyWright.com. We have some great resources, blogs, white papers, um, you know, that kind of thing. We have some videos, things like that. Um, and if you just want to chat, just, you know, um, email me or look me up on LinkedIn um, there as well, like everybody else is, I guess. Okay, perfect. So uh, such a great episode here. And I, and I really hope people see and recognize the importance of, of writing and take it seriously so that they can deliver some of the great work that they have to deliver beyond just like doing the technical work, but we need to be able to communicate that effectively. Exactly. Do. So thanks so much for all you do to help support that and wish you nothing but continued success. Thanks so well, much. Well, thank me. you. I appreciate, I appreciate you having me on. It was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We would love to hear your feedback, comments, and questions. You can go to engineeringmanagementinstitute.org where you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in the episode as well as links to any of the resources or websites that we mentioned in the episode. And don't forget to check out any upcoming live webinars for this month at the website as well. Additionally, for any engineers who feel like they need extra help taking the next career step or finding clarity in their careers, I've created some free training resources with an opportunity to join a more intensive program called the Engineering Career Accelerator. You can find more information at engineeringcareeraccelerator.com or you can go grab my career clarity checklist found at www.engineeringcareeraccelerator.com slash career clarity. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering endeavors.